Let's do some bad science, some bad Hollywood science. The Core. I love this movie. I just want to be clear before we get into this. I love this movie. I love pretty much everything about it, except for the science, like all of the science, because it's all completely wackadoodle, but I still love this movie. So we're going to criticize it from a loving place, from a kind place, from a place of like, hey, why did you do that? <laughs> Help me understand. <laughs> We're not going to get into the entire movie. We're going to focus on one point. That's what these explainers are. But I have many other topics to bring up with this movie and I will do so in the future. Before we get into it though, um, please do let me know if there's any explainers you would like me to do. And if you're enjoying what I'm doing, then yeah, like and subscribe and, you know, engage with stuff. That would be great. Thank you so much. So let's talk about the core when the science just stops. Now, like I said, there's a lot of wild claims in the movie, but the one that really just like, it, it just like hurts, just hurts, it's this scene. Wrapped around the Earth is an invisible field of energy. It's made up of uh, electricity and magnetism, so it's called, creatively enough, the electromagnetic field. Yeah, you see, no, that's, it, it doesn't. That's not what it's called. It's not how it works. <laughs> What they actually mean here, and what they should have said, is the geomagnetic field. Because Earth has a magnetic field, yes. It does interact with charged particles from the sun, absolutely. But it's not made of electricity and magnetism. Now, the phrasing, we could say it's technically true in some sort of abstracty kind of way, because electricity and magnetism are linked. But in this context, it's just really bad science communication from the character who is meant to be a geophysicist. And throughout the entirety of the movie, they keep calling it the EM field. EM field. EM field. EM field. EM field. EM field. As if our whole planet is just wrapped in like some Wi-Fi signal uh, and it's just suddenly glitching or something. It's not. It's a magnetic field generated by the motion of liquid metal deep underground. So before we talk about what would happen if Earth's magnetic fields just disappeared, let's talk about where it actually comes from. The core, the peach pit in the center. That's a tricky one. There's two parts, the inner core and the outer core. What we're dealing with here is a planetary scale magnetic field the geomagnetic field. It's generated by what's happening deep inside Earth. It's what keeps solar radiation at bay, it protects our satellites, it makes compasses point north. And it's created by what we call a geodynamo, which is a process happening deep down in the Earth's core. So about 3,000 kilometers down you will reach Earth's core. The inner core is solid and it's about the size of the moon. The outer core is a 2,200 kilometer thick shell of molten iron and nickel. So it's hot, it moves like a fluid and it's electrically conductive. And this movement of electrically conductive liquid metal combined with Earth's rotation creates a self-sustaining loop, the geodynamo. Moving conductive fluid generates electric currents. Those currents generate magnetic fields. And then those magnetic fields influence the flow of the fluid. It's a feedback system. And it keeps going as long as there's enough heat to drive convection in the outer core. Now this isn't just like some idea or some sort of guess. It's supported by seismic data, computer models, and high pressure lab experiments. It also happens to be one of the clearest real world examples of electromagnetic induction, which is one of Maxwell's core principles, and it's applied on a planetary scale. So you might be asking at this point, well, why isn't that an electromagnetic field? Electromagnetic fields are generated when changing electric and magnetic fields interact, forming traveling waves that move through space. Yes. Earth's magnetic field is related to moving charges, and it does fall under the umbrella of Maxwell's equations. Now, these are a set of equations that describe how electric and magnetic fields behave and interact. James Clark Maxwell, uh, he's the guy who unified electricity and magnetism into one framework called electromagnetism, which includes both static and dynamic fields. So here's the difference. 
an electromagnetic field, an EM field, like a light wave or a radio signal, that is a dynamic oscillating wave that carries energy through space. It radiates outward. Earth's magnetic field, that is a largely static field. It doesn't oscillate like a wave. It do doesn't travel through space as radiation. It's generated and held in place by the convection of molten iron in Earth's outer core. A steady, structured magnetic field, not a pulse of energy. So, Earth's magnetic field isn't some electromagnetic field cloud that like collapses like a dropped signal. It's a planetary scale magnetic structure shaped by a geophysical motion. It's kind of like a vast, like slowly shifting magnetic bubble instead of an electromagnetic pulse. That's not where it is. Where am I going? Guys, it's hard to do this sometimes. <laughs> pulse. Static. Anyway, moving swiftly along. <laughs> the main point with Earth's magnetic field, though, is that it is crucial for shielding life on Earth from space radiation. So, hopefully, we now know what the difference is and we understand what we're talking about here as a geomagnetic field, and we'll just refer to it as that from now on and drop that glaring, glaring mistake in the movie. But let's move on to what the movie's central premise is and let's entertain it for a minute. And that's where we have our problem. This engine has stalled. The core of the Earth has stopped spinning. Now, firstly, we have zero evidence that it ever could stop. The core's motion is driven by heat escaping from the inner core, radioactive decay and cooling from the mantle above. That convection, you have like rising heat and circulating liquid metal. This is what keeps the geodynamo going and that's what sustains the magnetic field. So the core just stopped. <laughs> it's already a massive stretch. But if it did, then, then yes, the geodynamo would shut down. Earth's magnetic field would start to fade. But let's be clear about something here, because this wouldn't be instant. I think in the movie it happens in like three months or something, or they say they have three months until everything on Earth is going to be dead. The magnetic field doesn't just switch off like a lamp. It would decay gradually and it would take thousands of years. And even then, the immediate danger isn't like, you know, everyone with a pacemaker drops dead. What was that about? Or birds go feral and smash into buildings. I know there's a lot of pigeons in London, you guys, but like, come on, we didn't need to go Hitchcock on it. Here's what actually happens without a magnetic field. Firstly, solar winds. So the streams of charged particles that are constantly blasted out from the sun would begin to erode the upper atmosphere over time. Charged particles could then damage satellites, disrupting our communications and increasing radiation exposure at higher altitudes. Auroras would shift and intensify across different parts of the planet. The real world comparison for us is Mars, because Mars used to have a magnetic field but it lost its geodynamo early in its history. So now it just has a thin, stripped down atmosphere and surface radiation levels that make it pretty hostile to life, as we know it. <laughs> uh, but that's a slow process, over hundreds of millions of years. It's not a microwave death beam frying the Golden Gate Bridge. The core basically says, in three months, all electronics will be fried and in a year, the planet will burn. <laughs> Like, come on, okay. Fried electronics, sure, if we had a massive geomagnetic storm, but that's solar activity, not core behavior. A burning planet? Not unless you give it several million years, and even then, we're talking slow atmospheric erosion, not like, you know, Earth barbecue. So yes, the magnetic field is important. It does protect us. But even in a worst case core stopped spinning scenario, we'd be dealing with long term climate and radiation issues, not a sudden sci fi apocalypse. Hmm. Three months, gentlemen, 
and we're back in the Stone Age. A full year, the field collapses, and that. Look, the core is not a science documentary, okay? We're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna freak out about it. It's a disaster movie. It's from the golden age of landmark destruction and slow motion hero shots. But <laughs> it is trying. It's ridiculous. It is completely mad, off the rails. But underneath all of that, there's real science poking through. Okay, no, I am reaching super hard with that. I mean, come on. They got the structure of the earth mostly right. There we go. Uh, at some point, they do name check the dynamo. <laughs> but like, they make the magnetic field seem like something that matters because it does, which is great. It's just the execution is complete nonsense, but the enthusiasm, 10 out of 10 for enthusiasm. <laughs> I mean, this is a movie that also brings us unobtainium, nuclear detonations for torque and a geophysicist burning peaches in front of generals. And you know what? I'm fine with it. Because sometimes, even when the science is bad, the curiosity it sparks is good. And if the core made you want to learn why the magnetic field matters or why birds don't usually start attacking humans en masse, then it did something right. I guess. We should stay curious. Sure. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too generous. I'm definitely trying to be generous because I do, like I said, look, I really like this movie. But I will always fight for the fact that that is a glaring omission to use that term. And I do think that there are some things when it comes to science fiction, when it comes to movies, or essentially what we're talking about here is Hollywood science. There is a difference between science fiction and Hollywood science. This is Hollywood science. Now, in a disaster movie in Hollywood science and stuff like that, it's for the fun, it's for the spectacle, we get it. But there are certain things that you can say correctly without it changing anything. There was no reason for them to not say that they're talking about the geomagnetic field. There was absolutely no reason to do that. Um, them substituting in electromagnetic field, when I know that they did have science consultants on the movie, just feels like just such a weird decision to make. And it's something that we really need Hollywood to stop doing. We can watch these stories and we can laugh at the spectacle and we can enjoy it and we can understand that the reality of like, oh, the core stops spinning is not going to happen. But we don't have to take the, you know, wild, crazy story science for the sake of filmmaking and make it just a ridiculous uh, mashup of the real science, if that makes sense, you know? Like I said, I mean, they could have literally just said geomagnetic field throughout the whole movie and it wouldn't have been an issue. It's the fact that they took something very real and said it was something else that makes no sense and I don't understand why a filmmaker would make the choice to do that. Because all it does is it confuses people because these movies do make us curious. We do start to wonder, oh, could the core stop spinning or what would actually happen? Is the, what the movie is saying what would happen? And that's why I make the videos I make because I enjoy looking at those movies and answering those questions as best I can. So yeah, in future, maybe when you're writing your movie, don't just make such a glaringly obvious mistake because why? <laughs> anyway. That's it for the core for this week. And um, thanks for hanging out with me. Like I said, if there's any explainers you would like me to cover, then do let me know and I will take care of that. But for now, stay nerdy and stay curious. Later.